Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Patricia Mona Intuitive Consulting. This is where we take the pulse of the month and feel the energy of what is coming up. We do it in an astrological way with my dear friend, Susan Reynolds, who is a karmic astrologer, and I remote view and see what's coming up um, and give you the heads up on, on the month ahead. So thank you so much for joining us again, Susan. Thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. I was saying, always fun. Yeah, yeah, it is. I love these conversations with you because, um, you know, the feedback is it's amazing to be able to see how much astrology and remote viewing do go hand in hand, and you know, just the different ways to be able to pick up the information, but yet the information is the same. So it's it's quite fascinating. Um, so right before we jumped on the call. I was saying, you know, how was your month? Um, and it sounds like you and I have had a very similar energy energy this month. It's, um, you know, there was a full moon on Monday in Gemini. And people who are sensitive, people who are maybe more empathic, definitely seem to react more strongly to these full moons. Mm -hmm. And one of the first ways that I notice a full moon coming is that I start to have trouble sleeping. So I don't know if you ever experienced it that way, but up to three days before the full moon. So if the full moon was on Monday, that would mean like starting last Friday, people may have started to notice more trouble falling asleep. You know, they may have been more restless. First of all, it's a full moon and then Gemini is a restless sign. They can't quite settle. It's an air sign and, and the mind struggles to focus on something. We just flip from this thing to this thing and stuff's going all over kind of thing. So I've noticed the, the trouble sleeping with the full moon and a full moon is about things coming to fullness. And so often we notice more inflammation in the body, like that's coming to the surface, or there's more water retention. People may have a few extra pounds. You know, people get more headaches. I, I get migraines and I notice I'm more prone to migraine under a full moon. You know, medicine has charted this, but lots of times we forget. We just, we don't equate what's going on in our daily life with the fact, oh crap, the moon is full. <laughs> Yeah, But it's also, I don't mean to say that that's a bad thing or a horrible thing, because when the moon is full, it is a good time for letting go of things. And, you know, I don't do a lot of ceremony work, but when I do, it's almost always at a full moon. Mm -hmm. Because think of something that's reached its fullness. There's there's no place else for it to go. It's full. We're done. There, there's no more putting energy into this. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful time to think about what do you want to let go of? an old attitude? Do you want to let go of resentments? Do you want to let go of some weight? Do you want to let go of clutter? You know, you get to be in charge of releasing. And there's all kind. you can look up online, there's all kinds of ceremonies and prayers for releasing at the full moon. Mm -hmm. Because post full moon, it's a wonderful time for feeling free, for feeling excited about what's coming up and what you've just let go of. So they're not bad things every moon has its good side it's not so good side as i we struggle with the one that's wonderful but this full moon seems to i think because of the gemini energy seems to just have people running around a lot chicken with their head cut off lists going on in their minds i need to do this i need to do that plans changing things up in the air it has been a very restless moon yes i i 100 percent agree with you and uh, one of the things that it's interesting how you said, you know, uh, full moon's all about um, things coming up, coming to fruition and letting it go. It, this full moon felt weird to me. It, it felt very potent. Um, it felt, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's almost like reality shifted somehow. I was in Mexico um, over the full moon and um i was there for 11 days and the one thing that i love watching about being there on a full moon is you can see the ocean waves um you know going from stillness to to crazy waves and it's because of the gravitational pull between the moon and the ocean and you know you think of what that does to the body when we're 85 percent water of course we're going to feel that effect as well but this full moon it just it felt really weird, um, almost like something 
tilted. And I, 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 I have a really tough time explaining that. But the one thing that I did notice um, around the full moon was a lot of unhealed wounds coming to the surface. A lot of, you know, thinking of things that, oh, I haven't thought of that in 20 years, or I haven't, you know, thought of that person. And then you bump into them, you know, and it's just, when I prayed about it, it, what I heard was, this is another chance for us to, you know, reconciliation, be able to finally put things to, to rest. Um, you know, because, no matter how much we want to shove things down, it will always come back up until it's addressed. At the end of the day, un unless we actually heal our stuff and learn from it and grow from it, it will just keep coming at us with a different face or a different scenario, you know, but it's the same energy showing up again and again. And so I just, I noticed that kind of an energy around this full moon. Um, it just felt so much more potent and so I, I found myself, uh, you know, in a lot, staying in a, in a state of prayer a lot more this week. Now you have to remember a full moon happens when the sun and the moon are opposite each other. And in astrology, the moon is symbolic of our inner self, our emotional response, our innate sense of security, our nurturing. How do we nurture? How do we need to receive nurturing? But the sun is our outer self. How does the world see us? How do we project ourselves? The sun is about our willpower, our personality, our life force. So you've got our inner self and our outer self fighting each other. And that's always a time of conflict. If you're looking at it right and you're looking at it with awareness, you start to experience exactly what you've been experiencing. What needs to come up? What do I need to address? What do I need to look at? But if you don't have that level of awareness and this conflict between the inner and the outer you is going on and you don't know enough to look at it in that way, it can come out in not as healthy ways. It can come out with more aggression. The things we don't want to look at, let's put that over in the corner that we refuse to address. It comes out with put up your dukes, you know, kind of thing. You, you start to yell at the sales clerk or the cashier or somebody or, you know, just traffic well, this full moon in Gemini traffic being completely crazy and and people sort of being much more impatient and it's going to come out in other ways yes. that may not be as life affirming and healing. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's so important to do exactly what you're doing, to be in prayer, to be in awareness so that we can be in charge of those energies, yeah. especially you know, the moon was in Gemini, but the sun was and still is in Sagittarius. You know, Sagittarius is a sign that is known for being very blunt, very to the point. And so we may have said things these last couple of days that we sort of wish we could take back. Or maybe we're thinking, I could have said that better. Or maybe that was a little abrupt kind of thing. And there's an innocence to Sagittarius. They will tell you the truth, but it's never meant to her. They will just say, well... I thought you were on the diet. Should you be eating that hot fudge Sunday? You know, they're not trying to hurt you. Yeah. But they don't stop to realize that might not be helping the situation. And so sometimes we have that foot and mouth disease and we have to backtrack. Go, no, no, I didn't mean it like that. Or, oh, you took that wrong. That was a compliment kind of thing. Yeah. So truth can come out in lots of different ways. It can come out with ourselves looking within and going, you know what? I need to address that. That's holding me back. But it can also come out without, where we could be a little snippy or many a truth is said in jest, something that, you know, had had humor to it, but wasn't taken very well. Yeah. So we may all be struggling and looking at truth versus our phrasing. Mm -hmm. How do we look within and accept our own truths? Most of us are not walking on water yet. We have room for improvement, you know? Totally. Well, and this is the time to do it, right? It is, it, it definitely feels like um, a time to go within and, and, you know, get back to that, that connection that we have been feeling so disconnected from. So it's definitely a time for, for renewal almost. And I know we're going into, I know we're in fall and winter and renewal is more spring, but there has to be that, that, that renewal of self that is, there's a newness 
I can feel that. And I think that in 2024, we're going to see that newness actually come to fruition. And so the greatest things that we can do right now is, you know, go within, find that sense of renewal within yourself. What do you want to create? What do you want to do? What have you been holding yourself back from creating? You know, now is, I don't know, I think it's more, it's the brainstorming, it's the thinking, you know, how, how do I change course if that's exactly what I want to be doing? I think it's a, a, a planning stage almost that um, over these next few months, that that if we go into that and we're open to what spirit the direction that spirit you know is pushing us in and we listen you know to to our innate inner self i think that we really can change our world next year um you know in our on an individual scale and on a global scale it just it feels like next year is we're on the precipice you know, um, in, a, in our personal lives, in our professional lives, and on a global scale, it just feels like things are shifting. And when you go within and you're looking for the answers, they, they do come <laughs> when you quiet your mind. But that's the thing, when we're stuck in this go, go, go and being pulled and pushed in a million different directions, where do you find that time for that quiet stillness? You know, and I think that that is really important right now. I'm going to say, and, and I've mentioned this to you before, every January, I do my predictions for the new year talk. Yeah. And I talk about predictions for different countries, for the world, for us in our personal lives. And in the first hour, I talk about what do I see coming up? And in the second hour, I do like a brief overview of each sign. And so I've been working on this for weeks and weeks and weeks, wow. looking at next year. And one of the big, big things that is happening right in January, I think on January 4th, is that Pluto is going to finally leave the sign of Capricorn and it's going to move into Aquarius. And Aquarius and Capricorn are like this, they're like oil and water, oh. where Capricorn is more traditional and authoritative. You know, Aquarius is more youth oriented and about equality and freedom. So one of the reasons that we're seeing so much conflict, both without and within ourselves, is because there is this shift from the old way of doing things to a new way of doing things. We're going to see this for all of us on the, on the national level and the international level, but we're also going to see this on a personal level. So even though that's a few weeks away, many people who are sensitive to the energies are already starting to pick this up, are already starting to move into this new vibration. And it's unsettling. It's, I'm excited about it. I look at this as a very positive thing, but that doesn't mean it's not unsettling just a little bit yeah. because most of us get comfortable in a routine or a rut. And Aquarius comes in and says, I'm going to change things up. Let's do it this way. Let's see how you react to that. So lots of times we feel something we don't understand. We feel unsettled or we feel something's coming. We can't quite figure it out, but it's there. And you're right. This energy is going to be very strong next year from January through August. So for most of 2024, we're looking at this shift from the old to the new, which is one of the reasons we're seeing this play out internationally. We're seeing the, the fight between these these autocratic, almost dictator-like governments that want authority and rule and power into this new Aquarian energy of freedom, equality, democracy. This is why there's so much going on in those areas. Now, this new energy that comes in, that's not just for 2024. That's going to stay there for close to 20 years. Oh, wow. So this next couple of decades, it doesn't leave until 2043. Wow. So next year is the beginning of decades of change, some upheaval. We, the more authoritative the government, the more uprisings we're going to see, the more challenge to that we're going to see. So we're going to see old leaders move out and new energy come in. Yeah. We're going to see a lot of uh, governments and people and magazines and TV shows talking about youth, the youth of today, the youth movement, the, the youth want this or that, the new way of doing things. That's all part of this new energy. So we could talk more about that in January, but a lot of people already starting to, to focus in on that and to pick that up without understanding what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this is a lot of what you're picking up. 
Yeah, like we're all, like you said, we are already seeing it within the governments as well. Um, and, you know, when you talk about um, bringing in the new paradigm, you know, on a global scale, government wise, God, I can see where that narrative is going with the digital identity. And it's funny because I started talking about it in 2020, um, you know, when when they came out with the QR codes and um, couldn't go into a restaurant or anywhere without the QR code, right? Well, they're, when they bring in this digital identity, it's gonna have everything on it. Your, your medical records, your driving records, your um, everything, everything that is, you know, your credit card information, your banking, all of that, we're moving towards, you know, a digital identity. And I really truly feel that that is one of the big agendas that is coming in all across the world. And it's crazy, like when you go down that rabbit hole of the World Economic Forum, and the New World Order, and who's sitting on top of that, you know, King Charles, is huge with the world economic forum so you can see where this is going to go all across europe right so it's i don't i don't think that there is a way to change the narrative of what's coming i almost think it's of biblical proportions um but i know that i just i know that we're here to witness it we're here to be a part of it in this time period for a reason you know and i just i think it's important to um i think it's really important to be able to stay in that state of peace and grace no matter what is being thrown at us you know um but yeah it's 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 a little disconcerting <laughs> um well, yeah <laughs> my parents my parents told me about this stuff in the 80s they started talking about the world economic forum and the new world order and the one world government and the one world currency and so to see it come to pass in my in my lifetime it's really 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 trippy um but i think that that is one of the big agendas that's going to be pushed um in 2024 and 2025 and stuff moving forward i think that's what we're going to i'm going to say um aquarius rules technology uh, and so in these last few months, like maybe in the last six months, I have heard more about AI technology than I've heard in the last six years, yeah. you know, and that's part of this Aquarian energy. And yes, digital currency and more technology and how do we have privacy and being invasive and all this is part of Aquarius. There's no sign in astrology that is all bad. There's no sign of astrology. It's all good. We all have our shadow side. We all have our high side. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with different things going on. Just because an aspect may be difficult or challenging doesn't mean it has to come out that way in your life. Yes. It can come out in your chart and your life in a great way. And you're like, I don't know why people are upset. I think this is lovely. You know, you're having a great time. So even when difficult or challenging things happen, they're not happening to punish us. They're happening in a way for us to move forward. Yes. So yeah, we've, we've got some major things going on next year and we'll talk more about this because I'm still working on this, but we are now moving into December, which is really finishing up this crazy tumultuous 2023 and yes. getting ready for a whole new ball game in 2024. And we're gonna see some big changes next year but we're already starting to experience some of that right now. Mm -hmm. And December is, I don't know what it's like in Canada. In the United States, December is a weird month because it's the holidays and all the businesses have all the holiday stuff out and it's Christmas carols and bye, bye, bye. And people are going to holiday parties and hosting things and buying, shopping, wrapping, baking. Oh my God, we you know it is stressful. It's busy. Forget the holiday spirit. People are stuck in traffic and honking their horn and stealing parking spaces. It's just an odd month because yeah. most of us are off schedule. We're, we're, we're doing things we don't usually do. We're, we're doing things we only do once a year. So it's a little disconcerting anyway, just because it's that month. Mm -hmm. But we also have, not only the sun is going to be in the sign of Sagittarius until the 23rd of December, but we have Mars in Sagittarius as well, sitting right next to the sun. So the sun and Mars are like this. They're like right next to each other. 
and they get along. You know, the, the sun is a fiery planet. Mars is kind of a fiery sign. They get along great. But Mars is a planet of war. Uh, and it can be quite feisty. Mm -hmm. It can, you know, it is the time of honking your horn at somebody and I need that parking space. <laughs> you know, screw love and light. I'm going to take it. So Mars is strong. It's forceful. It's feisty. And if we're stressed, that may come out in ways that are a little inappropriate. We say something and then, we're, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Or, oh, I was short with the kids. Or I wasn't as patient with this store clerk as I should have been. They were trying to help me. You know, we're sometimes apologizing to ourselves as well as to other people. Yeah. So we have to watch that Mars energy to use it in the best way possible. That Mars energy is great. If you have trouble speaking up for yourself, because Mars will push you. Say, excuse me, I was here first. You don't have to yell or scream or throw a fit. We could just quietly assert, you know, I believe you go to the end of the line. You know? yeah. I was here first. Quiet to the point. We can speak up to our boss and talk about, well, I have some good ideas going into next year. Or could we talk? Or, oh, I believe that was my idea that you just took the credit for. Yeah. Hopefully nicer language than that. But Mars is wonderful for us having a sense of courage. So what are things that you may have wanted to do or try that have maybe been a little intimidating? You know, the first time I spoke in public about astrology, I was throwing up in the bathroom <laughs> before I got out there. Yeah. I'm not a public speaker, but I do it all the time for work, but it's not my best thing. So I would have loved to have had some of that courage, you know, or maybe you've always wanted to play the flute, but you're 82 and you're like, oh, I don't want to look like an idiot or something, you know, go ahead and play the flute, you know, mm -hmm. Mars gives us the courage to try new things. It gives us the courage to stand up for ourselves and we have the courage to stand up for somebody else. If we see somebody else being treated badly, we have the courage to stand up for them. We take action. I'm a big procrastinator, not happy about it, but I really struggle with procrastination. Yeah. But Mars is very action oriented. So Mars doesn't want to sit around and wait and think about it. Mars wants to do, wants to do it now. Let's do this. Let, let's, I'll drive you there right now. Let's go. Mars is ready to do it. So this means we can get a lot done. Oh, nice. In the month of December coming up, this is going to be a busy month, but we're going to have physical energy. Because Mars is forceful and dynamic. Mm -hmm. So we're on it. We're like, okay, I've got a list. I'm ready to go. I'm going to get out of the house and cross off all these things. So we have to just make sure that we are using this combination mm -hmm. in a way that supports us and helps us yeah. without letting it move into unnecessary anger or irritation or impatience or annoyance. Mm -hmm. That's the shadow side of Mars. Gosh. One of the reasons I like doing these conversations is because it gives people a heads up to say, oh, Patricia, since we're talking about this, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to handle this in a better way. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely, it, 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 I get a lot of people go, oh, it makes so much sense why I was feeling the way I was, or, you know, um, you said that, and then this is what happened. And so it's, it's neat to know that, yes, there is an energy um, that you can actually tune into and feel what's coming up. And so then, then what's the best thing is that then you don't feed into it. You know what I mean? You can step back and go, oh, not today, Satan. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and, and don't fall into that trap. But uh, yeah, it's it's definitely good to give people a heads up. I did pick up, I said that um, December has a lighter yet heavier feeling to it. Um, and, and I think what I was getting at there was energetically it will be lighter, but if I, I noticed that when I was scanning for energy around other people, other people seemed like they had heaviness on them. So when I asked, okay, well, what is it that I'm seeing? It's a time to help others, help others wherever you can in need. If, if, if the universe is put planting you in, in a place where someone is calling for help or needing help, 
please be that hero, stand up, you know, help that person in whatever capacity you can. Um, it is a test of faith. I do believe that angels come to us in disguise. I totally believe that. Um, I actually, I mean that. I actually met an angel in disguise um, when I was in New York. It was a homeless person, a homeless lady that uh, I went to go and um, place, uh, I, I think it was just a few dollars that I gave her. But the minute I touched her hand, Susan, oh my God, the most amazing, angelic, light, sensation went through my hands and through my whole body and all of a sudden I started tingling and I knew I knew that I had met an angel in disguise so you never know when you're entertaining angels so rise to the occasion and definitely step up and and help out wherever you can for sure oh yeah this you know like you say you have that something you can't explain and Many times when you are in the presence of an angel or have met an angel in human form, they're gone when they shouldn't be gone. Yeah. You know, like you, you turn around and like, where did they go? Like, who's that masked man? You know, they, they turn, you turn around and they're not there. You, you've met an angel. Yeah. You know, yeah. December, I'm really looking forward to because in this month, not one, but two planets that have been retrograde, meaning they've been looking like they're going backwards change direction, start moving forward. For the last few months from like September through right now, December, we've had all these planets moving backwards and many people have felt stuck or they have felt like they, they can't move forward the way they want to, or things aren't happening the way they want to. And they're frustrated or they don't understand or the harder they try, the behind you they get kind of thing, you know? So one by one by one, little by little, all these planets are starting to move forward. And on December 6th, Neptune moves forward, which is lovely. And then right at the tail end of the year, almost like a new year gift to us, on December 31st, Jupiter turns direct and starts to move forward again jupiter is is the big planet it is a planet of big dreams big hopes optimism enthusiasm so we don't always like it when it's going backwards we want access to all that enthusiasm and positivity and glass half full kind of energy and so many people have sort of been irritated at things taking too long or i can't get a hold of this person or i thought this would be done by now and it's not so there's been a sense of frustration what i like about neptune turning direct neptune is a very spiritual planet it's a very intuitive planet it rules our spirituality, it rules our psychic development, all things woo-woo come under the guise of Neptune. Yeah. And so as it starts to move forward, many of, of you can start to have more mystical experiences. You know, this is a time of year when magical things happen. And so I'm already noticing that my dream life is picking up. Yes, way more vivid dreams. Oh, I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Susan, I'm not one to remember my dreams, but I'm telling you, and the weirdest thing is, I know, okay, so I know how to astral project and astral um, and astral travel. I was travel. actually trained on how to do that. It is the trippiest, coolest yeah. thing. Like when it actually happens to you and you come out of your body, you're like, oh my God, it is the craziest, craziest. Anyways, I'm catching myself. The second I'm falling asleep, I'm catching myself, pulling myself out of my body. And instantly I know what I'm doing. Okay, got to go here. Okay, here, got to go here. And it's like, wow, what is happening? Because it's so much more vivid. So please tell me, are, are you serious that the planets have something to do with that? Yes, Neptune is a planet that rules dreams. Oh. Not our goals and ambition kind of dreams, our, our REM sleep, yeah. going to sleep yeah. and having a dream kind of dreams. Yes. I've already noticed, I've, I've been having a kind of health issue and I was going to sleep thinking about that. And literally in the dream, I had somebody come up and say, this person is the one that can help you. And I started to look at it, I was like, oh my God, they were right. You know, like I got the answer in a dream. So many people are gonna to start to have precognitive dreams. They're yeah. gonna see their dream life pick up. They're gonna to start to remember their dreams. This is a great time to keep a dream journal because the energy around it shift from seemingly backward motion to forward motion puts more emphasis on that. Not only can our dream life pick up, but for maybe people who 
aren't making their living doing this like you and I, this yeah. is a time when they may want a reading. They may be already saying, I want some guidance for next year, or let me look at what's coming up with 2024 kind of thing. So, you know, they're getting that little tap on the shoulder. They may have angel encounters. They may get the name of their guide or, or you know, a spirit loved one that is working with them kind of thing. This is a deeply spiritual planet and is one that is also very artistic. So we start to look around and we want beauty in our life. We want to go to the ballet and see the Nutcracker, or maybe we attend the symphony or maybe we go to a concert. Maybe you've got Taylor Swift concert tickets and you're one of the lucky few that have gotten them. So we start to reach for music, art, writing, things that uplift our spirit. You know, it is a wonderful time for this energy to be kicking up right here at the tail end of the year. You know, I don't usually go all out or decorate, you know, for the holidays, but I just started getting everything out of the, you know, the storage. I'm going all out this year. I'm putting everything up, you know, so I've already got the wreath on the door and I'm putting up lights because there's that desire for the beauty of the season and the desire for us to uplift our spirit. Mm -hmm. So I'm thrilled that Neptune is turning direct next month. Well, I'm saying next month, it's, this is for December. So next month will be January. Yeah. Um, in January, I think on January 27th, Uranus will turn direct. And that's the last planet that's been retrograde that will turn direct. Oh, wow. And so almost like right out of the gate in January, we're going to be ready to go. We're going to be like, okay, I'm ready to attack this. I'm making the calls. I'm looking for a new job. I'm buying a house. I'm, I'm proposing. I'm doing whatever I want to do. That stuck energy is leaving. And we're excited about moving forward. Nice. So it's a very strong, very positive energy moving into January. But we start to open up to that right now in December. And at the end of the month, when Jupiter starts to turn direct, we start to look at our dreams again, not our REM sleep dreams, but our goals, our ambitions. What do I want to be when I grow up? You know, what do I want my business to do? Do I want to stay at this company? Do I want to start my own company? Do I want to have a baby, propose to my partner or, you know, do whatever. We have big dreams. We have big goals. The sky's the limit because Jupiter has no limit. So we may have, okay, I'm going to write that book and compose a symphony. We may we go a little overboard, you know? But it's a positive energy because we're looking at moving forward and expanding our dreams and doing big things. We're going to start to actually feel that before the 31st. Even though it turns direct on the 31st, most people start to pick up that energy a little sooner. So if you've been feeling a little down in the dumps or struggling with the blues or whatever, you're going to start to feel more upbeat because of the shift with Jupiter. Good. One of the things I want to make sure that everybody is aware of for December, and this one I'm not that happy about, but you need to be aware of it. So I'm going to mention it. Um, on December 13th, Mercury is going to turn retrograde. Doesn't say retrograde very long, only from December 13th through January 2nd, which is what, you know, maybe two and a half, three weeks, something like that. Yeah. But it's retrograde right there in the middle. Oh, yes, of the shopping and the buying and the ordering stuff online and the planning. And yes. so I'm going to say, do your holiday shopping early, you know, get on it right now. Just do as much early as you can allow extra time because Mercury is about commerce. Mercury is about travel. Mercury is about communication. Mm -hmm. And when it's retrograde, none of those things move as smoothly. So the gifts that you ordered online or in another country and they're so sorry but they won't be here till february you know kind of thing um you know you get what you ordered but it's the wrong size or the wrong color you know or you get somebody else's you know gifts in the mail plans get changed at the last minute oh uncle fred was going to come but now he's not coming and aunt joanne is going to come instead you have to be flexible that's going to be important and if possible have a plan b if you're traveling build an extra day mm -hmm. you think you're going to leave this it builds an extra day yes i have a feeling and this is more intuitive than astrological but it feels to me like the northeast of the united states is going to have a very harsh winter 
that's ice storms, more snow, more difficulty. So that's like, you know, the, what, the eastern part of, of Canada as well. I yeah. think there's going to be a lot of snow, a lot of ice that can translate into planes that don't take off and trains that don't make it on time and travel plans that have to be adjusted. So build in your cushion. Mm. Don't let this be stressful for you. You're like, okay, I planned for this. We can weather this. We're, I'm fine. You know, well, like, thank you, petition, Susan, because I'm on it, you know? Well, and I, and I will say if for anybody who's going away over Christmas, um, you know, or, or are making travel plans, get out the insurance, definitely get the insurance because man, oh man, um, flying back and forth to Mexico, I could not believe it sounded like the whole bloody plane was sick. Like it, honest to God, it was, I didn't even move from my seat because all I could hear, I heard this little kid thrown up in the bathroom and my seat was kind of by the bathroom and everyone's coughing and sneezing and snotty. I was like, oh God, just stay in my little corner here. Um, but yeah, there, there's some nasty stuff that's going around. And ironically, I even wrote down, focus on your health, your physical health and your healing and, and raising that internal vibration within you. Because it just, I know that it's cough, cold and flu season, but it seems like there's a lot going on uh, or going around right now. So, you know, um, definitely up your vitamin C. I will say in October, I was in the airport flying um, back from another state back home and I had a mask on. I had an N95 mask on both in the airport and on the plane. And in the airport, I would say there was maybe 5% of the people were wearing a mask. No, 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 and mask. nobody else in the plane but me was wearing a mask. And I just kept it on. I'm like, I don't care. You can look at me all you want to look at. I'm keeping my mask on. Yeah, I gotta say it was kind of the one time where I'm like, Ugh. you know, I, if if I if I did wear masks, that would have been the time for me to whip it out. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I always ask for my white light of protection around me, and 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 yeah, you know, there's I, some nasty I, stuff going on out there. So there doctor is. up and. Um, I use, I don't know if we, we ever talked about this. I use dandelion extract as no, an immune it, support. Wait, you want to talk about that? Um, what well, it dandelion root extract, it's, um, it's a dark liquid extracted from dandelion, obviously. And one of its main uses is to support and enhance the immune system. And I'm going to tell you, it tastes God awful. I do not like to swallow this. So I cannot lie about this. This is not the best tasting stuff, yeah. but for me, it is super powerful. You know, it's, I take a, a, a tiny little bit in the morning and a tiny little bit in the evening and that's all I need. It lasts a long time, mm -hmm. but I have managed to get through these last four months without getting sick, without getting the flu, without getting COVID. And I think I told you um, a couple of months ago, my sister was in the hospital with COVID and I stayed in the hospital with her. And so I was helping feed her, bathe her, dress her, help her go to the bathroom. And I mean, if I didn't get, I was wearing an N95 mask and, yeah. you know, gloved up and taking care of myself, but I never got sick. Yeah. And I'm like, it was a dandelion <laughs> because I was taking that a lot. So each person has their own body of what their body does and does not like. You know, Patricia and I just kind of throw out and share this is something that's been working for me, or this is what I do. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, there may be something else that works better. But I'm of a certain age where I'm looking at taking care of my health a little bit more diligently and, you know, trying to dodge that bullet of, of being sick kind of thing. So yes, it's, it's not very expensive. I'm trying to remember what I paid for my bottle maybe $25, um, somewhere in there. Nothing that, you know, made me cringe. So I don't think it was too awful, awful expensive. Do you have a favorite, you have a favorite brand or anything that you use? Um, it's not a favorite brand. I can't remember the, the brand that I use. Next month when we do this, I'll bring my dandelion up with me and I'll show it to everybody so they can take a look at it if they want it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just... I ordered the brands. A friend of mine told me she was using. So this is how we do it. It's word of mouth. Yeah, you know, exactly. Friends tell friends this yeah. is working and we try it. And that's, you know, that's how I learn a lot of things. You know, thank goodness. I have a lot of friends in a holistic community that say, have you tried this or looked at that kind of thing? And, you know, I'm always like, okay, I'll try that. That sounds like fun. You know, and yeah. the dance lines worked very well. 
And speaking of that, I don't know if you know about this, but in Canada, the a natural supplements and, and um, it's all under fire big time. The Trudeau government is trying to get rid of, of all the natural supplements and everything. Mm -hmm. It's terrible terrible so yeah, yeah. No, it's good no we're idea. talking about this because i don't know give it a couple more years and you probably won't be able to get them here um i hope not. <laughs> i really hope not but yeah it's it's good to get this information so yeah whatever you've got um you know that you know that works for you i always try to keep some in stock because i remember 2020 and it seems like overnight we were all hunkered down and stuck and you know, even now I keep extra toilet paper in, in the closet. Uh, you never know. Susan, speaking of toilet paper, I got to tell you what's happening in Canada. So right now, Roger's sugar is on strike and you cannot find white sugar to save your life right now. It is gone. And then when you go on to Amazon to go and look up for, you know, just a, a two kg, you know, bag of white sugar. $27 for a small oh, sugar? white sugar. It's our, it's rare commodity right now. Cause it's all on strike and uh, yeah, there's no sugar to be had. And so restaurants aren't making their desserts. It's, it's just, it's no. insane what's happening right now. Yeah. Apparently they December, got... when everybody's eating and baking, <laughs> I know, I know. And they've already been on strike two months and, um, and so I don't know when they're going to get their act together, but yeah, anybody watching this, if you can find sugar, stock up on sugar, if you like sugar and you bake, because yeah, right now you can't find it. Wow. I do a lot of holiday baking in December and I just, you know, I, I'm one single person. I don't have a spouse or kids. So usually I buy the small little things of sugar, but yeah. because it's December, I bought like the big five pound bag of sugar. Now I feel a little guilty. They can't get this in Canada and I've yeah. got sugar to spare over here. Can't get it. Can't get it. Yeah. What about brown sugar? Can you get that? Or is that part of the strike thing too? You can't get brown sugar or it, um No, I, didn't see, I saw brown sugar, but it's Rogers white sugar. And okay. apparently Rogers is our biggest um, sugar... Wow. here in Canada so uh yeah there's nothing there's nothing so I saw I I ended up buying some organic like sugar cane sugar um mm -hmm. which I mean it it'll make do but uh yeah there's no white sugar whatsoever on the shelves right now yeah it's like it, it seems like a lot of us who have gone through COVID and the shutdown as adults Mm -hmm. We may have weathered it and gone through, but we have a little post PTSD, you know, like keep the sugar and make sure you have toilet paper and are there masks in the house? And it sort of helps me understand my mother and, and grandparents and people who went through the depression, like where they, they couldn't get anything and they had to make do. And, you know, my grandmother would just like save her pieces of aluminum foil and I'd be like, just buy a new roll. <laughs> now I understand, you know, because she'd always say, you never know. You never know when you might need that. And now I understand that. Speaking of that, my mom used to do that too. And I totally forgot about that until you mentioned that. But my mom used to do that as well. So, but. It's, it's funny the things that stay with us. Yes. And that are sort of like a holdover. And I just said to my friend one day, she has young children. And I said, your children are going to grow up and they're never going to know why mom insists on having 27 rolls of toilet paper on hand. All the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 2020 PTSD. <laughs> totally. Uh, well, but it's, you know, it's part of how we grow and we've gotten through it. And, yes. but yeah, I am. Um, one of the things I'll say that I know about next year is that not only do I say, and I hope I'm wrong. These are just little, you know, Possible predictions, this means it's going to happen. But for me, it feels like gas prices are going to go up. And it means that there's going to be increases in food because that's transportation and trucking and, you know, gas effects, all those things. And I think we may see some supply chain problems next year. You know, like nothing major, 
but little bits and pieces and pockets, sort of like you and the sugar, you know, over there, you know, in Canada. So yeah. I'm going to say going into 24, if there's something that's a staple for you or you have toilet paper trauma, stock up early because I think during throughout the year, we're going to see little pockets of you can't get this or that's out for a while or whatever. And it always seems like it's whatever your favorite thing is, like your brand of peanut butter is gone or your favorite, you know, jelly is off the shelf or whatever. Well, and I, I really hope that the price gouging goes down. You know, um, I know that this is this is such a simple or not simple, frivolous, you know, complaint. But like, for example, my mascara, the one mascara that I use, it's normally $9.99. I paid $26.99. The same store shoppers yeah. twenty six ninety nine. all of a sudden and it's like what is going on like how did that jump like that so much like who's gouging who so i'm really hoping that um the price gouging stops because it's not fair because you look at people's wages wages aren't going up yeah wages aren't going up three times with the prices of exactly. groceries and makeup and the, the supplies of living yeah are doing. so yeah I'm, I'm with you. That that gap, that wealth gap, is just getting get bigger and bigger. Um, you know, if if the governments don't step in and do something about the price gouging that's going on. But this is also part of that Aquarian energy. This is where we're going to see the populations of lots of countries, not just Canada or the U.S., start to demand this inequality stop that it shouldn't be seven people in the world who have the wealth of the next 38 billion people exactly you know that is unacceptable yeah. that the president of the company makes 14 million dollars a year and the workers make 12 dollars an hour yeah we're going to start to see more marches more demands the population because aquarius rules the populace of the, the every man and they're going to start marching and they're going to start making demands and they're going to start saying, this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. We will see change. We will not see it all happen in 2024. But over time, we're going to see changes in the way governments operate and in the way the population reacts to their government. And I see this as positive changes, you know, but it will take time. But yeah, that kind of price gouging, people are going to be, they're not just going to shrug and accept it. They're going to be up in arms over it. Why did this go up three times, you know, the price overnight? Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Um, and one other thing that I will say, when I scan Europe, um, I'm. it feels to me like there's going to be political unrest or civil unrest going on. Um, and so, like, I know, I think I mentioned it in last month's um, predictions where I was saying, you know, if be vigilant, be hyper vigilant when you're out, you know, if you've got to take subway stations or you see something weird, report it. Don't don't feel foolish for going and reporting something that does that stands out or that doesn't feel right to you, you know, just because um, I believe that it will be easy for any any of the people who want to bring that war that's happening um in palestine and israel and that want to bring that war here it's a paradigm it's an energy and it just feels like there could be lone actors so just be hyper vigilant you know um report things that that look out of that look out of order because um it just feels like there's going to be a lot of civil unrest in in europe and over there and i'm i'm hoping that i'm wrong about that i i pray for peace because lord knows this planet needs it um you know but just heads up on that because it does feel very fiery over there it's gonna be very easy with this aquarian energy for what i would call maybe outside agitators or people who do not have positive motives in their heart to get people riled up yeah. because Aquarius wants to express themselves and they want to get out there and march and, and it's fine. You know, in the United States, marching and picketing and making your voice heard is, is built into our national character, but there's a difference between doing that peacefully 
to advocate for change and this unsettled, potentially violent energy you're talking about. Okay. So we, and by we, I mean Europe, North America, the, the world can be more vulnerable to outside influences yeah. that are not for the highest good, that are for destruction rather than constructive building. So yeah, yeah I agree with you. All we can do is pray for peace, pray for peace and maintain our own peace, you know, because it starts at home. It really does. So, wow. Yeah. The more we carry peace in our heart, the more we are instruments for positive change. The yeah. less likely we are to get easily agitated or upset or listening to somebody go hate them or they're the problem, the more we sort of stay centered and calm in our own energy. Absolutely. Stay centered in your own truth. Great advice. Great advice, Susan. Well, is there any all of us? <laughs> I know, right? And you know what? It is the time to start looking within, gaining that strength. Because, like I said, we have the chance to change things in our world um, coming up. That manifestation energy is going to become becoming bigger and louder for each and every one of us. And it's up to us to grab onto it and make the changes, you know, that that will propel us into a, a better future than the one we're living right now. So we're living in interesting times. We really are. <laughs> yes, we are. We really are. Most definitely. Oh, is there anything else on the list that... Um, I know we're almost out of time. I'll mention one thing quickly, which is the full moon and the new moon. Yes. We have a um, full moon in Cancer right at the tail end of, the, of, of December. And that's going to be on the 26th. And we have a new moon um, earlier on the 12th. And the new moon is going to be in Sagittarius and the full moon is going to be in Cancer. And since the full moon is right there at the end of the year, um, right around Christmas, it's going to be on the 26th, literally the day after. So on Christmas Day, we will be in full moon energies. And remember what I said about conflict and inner and outer and all of our nearest and dearest gathered together in a small space. Yeah. So make sure you're using that energy in the highest possible way of loving, kindness, sensitivity, tolerance. You may need to go into the bathroom, take a deep breath and count to 10. Yeah. And then come out with a smile on your face. <laughs> but yeah, there's going to be a lot about home and family. So make sure that you're using that on your terms and not on somebody else's terms. But yeah, I'm excited about the new moon and Sagittarius, new ideas, new concepts, new books, new courses, new classes, all about education and and communication and sharing ideas. So very exciting December ahead of us, <laughs> leading us into the new year. So we'll talk about January next month when we we get together we'll talk more about what's going on right at the kickoff to the new year yeah perfect that'll be a good one that'll be an excellent excellent tune in for sure wow well thank you so 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 much susan i i love doing these with you um i didn't see anything you know major that i needed to necessarily warn people about in in a massive way but still you know just heads up and, and it's still a little bit of that stay in your own lane energy uh but it is getting lighter it's gonna get <laughs> breathe and and it'll feel like the pressure is is off so yes yeah yes it will okay yeah. well i'm gonna wish you and everybody else a happy holiday yeah. hope y'all have a wonderful december Thank you. Merry Christmas. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you uh, right at the end of December. We'll plan for that. And in the meantime, how do people book with you if they'd like the oh. consultation? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm going to my website. It's Explore Astrology. And I have free predictions for every sign every month. So um, probably tomorrow or the next day, I'll have the predictions for December on there. You don't have to buy anything or or join anything they're just there for you and check events because i'll have all the places i'm giving my predictions talk so thanks i always forget i'm terrible <laughs> at promoting myself
Well, and for me, if you'd like to book an appointment with me, uh, you can do so right through my website at www.patriciamona.com. I do teach online classes and meditations, um, as well as do readings, uh, both in person and online. So if you'd like to book an appointment, it's patriciamona.com. So thank you so, so much again, Susan. I always love doing this with you. It's such a, such a delight, such a pleasure. Um, yeah, Merry Christmas, and I will see you next month. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.